Page 31, Minuet. You can tell by when the composer lived just how old this piece is. It's an oldie. It's a golden oldie. At the top of the page, they're introducing you to binary form. Binary forms, music pieces, are in certain arrangements. Arrangements being they're set up in a particular order or a particular way. Okay? They have form. Binary means two. Bi means two. So it simply means that a binary form is a piece that is, has two sections. Here they're labeling them for you. Part A or section A are the first two lines and section B is the, sec the last two lines. What it is is it's a musical thought. It's a music something. It's a musical thing. Section A sounds like a certain thing and then section B will sound like something else. And that's the idea. Really that's all binary is. It's just two parts. I mean you get all, all kinds of forms in, in music. You, it gets really involved when you get into long pieces and it's, it's oh goody. Here I want to talk about the right hand. I mean that about all I have to say about binary form. You can go look it up and have fun exploring what it is if you're interested. But I want to talk about the right hand here. Again, we have the triplets. So if this is in three, four times, so it's like a one, two, three. It's a minuet. Of course, it's in three. It's minuet's like a waltz. It's like a predecessor to the waltz type thing. It's, it's not really a predecessor, but it's it's like a waltz. One, two, three. One, two. So it's two and a three and for the triplets, hopefully you can get those. I suggest you just do this, play it the way it's written. Use the fingering they've got, okay? Just follow, be careful what you're doing there. In the second measure there, it's a three and then a one and then a two. So you can bring the third up to the D, to the B. Second measure again. Look at the second measure there. It's a three and a one and now it's a two on that G. So you can bring the third finger up to the B. All we're doing is using the fingers to connect them, all right? Because we're not in a nice, neat five finger position. So now we're using our fingers to kind of crawl around on the keyboard. We do it a lot. I speak about feeling the melody. And here the melody's in the right hand. We want to feel the melody and one of the best ways to do that is to play it legato with the fingers, not using any pedal. There's no pedal in this anyway, it doesn't matter. But the point is I'm using the fingers to play it legato. So here I want I want to feel the melody. And I can do that easier if I playing it legato. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm crawling around on the on the keyboard with my fingers in order to play the melody legato. We do it in the left hand too. If you can play it legato, finger it legato if you can. Section B starts in the third line. You have here. It's a rest on the first beat, and then you, you see this repeated. You have triplets on the second and third beat. And section A did that too, but section B is doing it, but the, it's a different musical melody. Last line, watch the articulation. You're connecting the first two notes and then they're staccato. Last two measures, last two notes. Bring out the top note. That's the melody. That's what we want to hear. Left hand, just do what they're telling you to do. Watch all the ties. Watch the rest. You have some staccato in the left hand. We've got to have that too. Third line down, starting with a D. You can use thumb on both of those Ds in the second and third measure if you want. Or you can do a 2-1 on them. Last line, second measure, it's a one on the G, three on the B, and then the last one. We want to hear the bottom note. We have to play both notes, 
but it's the bottom, the bass note is more important. It's not melody. The melody stands out above it all, but between them, you have the melody you want to hear, and after that you want to hear the bass, and then you hear all the middle stuff. Repeat signs. We're going to repeat the first two lines because of repeat sign, and we're going to repeat the last two lines because of both, re you have a reverse repeat sign and a repeat sign, and so we're going to, okay. Articulation, I've talked about that already. Dynamics, you're starting out medium loud, you decide what that is. When you get to section B, now you're loud, a little louder than medium loud. But then the third measure, that third line, soft. See, the third measure is just a restatement of what came before, and this is common. When you have a musical statement, now I'm going to play it soft. It's like an echo. You get this a lot, and then the last line, you're loud again. Next measure, it's like an echo. You're soft again. And now you're going to end it loud. Okay. So put in the dynamics. Let's play this together. Three, four time. I will give us three counts. So put your hands where they go. Here. Okay. One, ready, go. Probably recordings of this around if you look around for them. Uh, I'm sure Telemann wrote a lot of minuets, so exactly how you find this one among all the others, I don't know. However, I will give you an idea of what I think this arrangement of it should go. All right? And this is an arrangement. 